Hey guys, so today I'm going to show you my um, Universal Yums box for the month of August, and I'm going to show you my munch pack for the month of August. Um, let's see, I think I will start with the munch pack first. Um, okay, so I actually subscribed to this box because I saw a few things and they're like insta stories that I really liked so I'm like okay I'm gonna try this out but when I actually got the box I did kind of have a sneak peek because I'm like oh like it's like a different box so I don't even know how they do their boxes like and I ordered like in the middle of August and um, like they put like stickers over items that are out of stock like any sort of replacement items but I was looking at the original items here and these are different items from what a lot of people got for August so I'm like not really sure if this is like the like their September box but like this is a different box um, the other box I saw people getting had like a um, Japanese grape drink and here the the soda upgrade in here is different so there's no sticker here so I don't know if this is like a different version of the box like if they just send out different versions it's like super confusing because I never seem to actually get like when I set up an order like what I see people posting I never seem to get like the same stuff so I'm like uh, okay um, so yeah like this time it's ramune it's not the grape drink so I don't know I, I'm just like I don't know how, how do they do it like how do you how do you know what you're getting? I guess you really don't. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys this box. My kitty can get off of it. Um, so with, this is everything that's in there. You can kind of see where it falls out. Um, okay, so the first thing that I did see that kind of stood out to me that looks pretty cool are these mini wafer bites. These are these thingies. And these guys are from let's see these are from okay they're, they're from indonesia and they're one of three flavors um hmm. it doesn't actually say on here uh oh wait it does okay duh okay so peanut butter ubi or chocolate and i got ubi which i'm really excited about because like i don't know i'm just not i mean chocolate you it's just kind of like, it's chocolate, right? And then like peanut butter, I'm like, mm, I don't know, like about that. So like ubi though, I love ubi. I actually made um, like a matcha green tea cake and put ubi ice cream on top. It was so good. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and try one of these. So if you didn't know, ubi is a purple sweet potato. That's really popular in Asian countries, especially the Philippines. I didn't know it was a big deal in uh, Indonesia, but now I kind of know. So it kind of just looks like a, like those little wafer rolls that you see, like those little stick thingies. Mmm. Mmm. And it smells really good too. Mm. So yeah, it tastes exactly like the purple yam taste. It's very similar. If you've had taro, it's very similar to that. Okay. Um, this is an item I recognize that I've tried before. That I still have some of are these baked old Dutch ketchup chips. These are actually on their shop. I bought some, I think about like four or five baggies of them. Pretty good. They feel like they got a little smushed, um, but I can always use these. I love these things. They're really good, just like to have as a snack. The baked version of Canada's kettle chips. So those are kind of nice to have. Um, I think those were a substitution. There was something from Croatia behind it. Okay. But, yeah, so I'm excited about those two guys. The next one I have here, it looks like these are some chewy candies. They look like that. So, okay, these are from Chile. Ooh, I don't think I've ever gotten anything from Chile. Uh, perfect for when you're craving something sweet and fruity. Enjoy sweet and sour mixed with loop rings. Oh, okay. So they are, they are, there are three varieties here. I include either the loop rings, the Frugilla Assorted, Frugilla Citric. Um, yeah, so 
I kind of wish I got the sour because I'm more of a sour person than the, I don't, I'm not a huge like fruit chew, sweet candy type of person, um, but I'm definitely going to give it a shot. Um, being from Chile, fun fact, I am a very little bit Chilean, um, so this is the first time I'll be able to try something from there, so that'll be cool. Um, Alright, so the next thing we got here is a super tiny. Um, these are the cookies and cream wafer bites uh, from Italy. And I'm still waiting to get an Italy box. I think I, I don't even think I've gotten a Germany box yet. I don't think so. I mean, I went to Germany, so I mean, I kind of, I kind of satisfied that, that kind of craving, so to speak. But um, I would love to get an Italy box. Um, if I don't, you know, end up going there soon, because we're talking about potentially going to Italy or Greece next spring, just like if things are safe again, just have to see. Um, but we have the cookies and cream wafer bites here. So let's try, I'm going to try these out. Ooh, smells, I mean they smell like Oreos. That's what that looks like. Okay. Hmm. Yeah. Tastes like Oreo. Just the texture is a little bit different. It has that like that sweet like white cream inside. And then and it even says here, no high fructose corn syrup. I mean, not surprisingly, because that's a big deal in the US, but a lot of other countries, the ingredients are much more simplified. Here in the US we have like crazy preservatives and everything. So I'm not surprised by that. So that is kind of cool and nice to know. All right. So next we got, this is kind of fun. We got this uh, sushi candy. So that's kind of fun. Mini sushi, gummy sushi. Sweet and juicy fruit, fruit flavored gummy comes in adorably cute sushi shapes. That's just as fun to eat as it is to look at. Oh, that is fun. Cute. I'm excited, excited to try that out. I don't think I've ever had like sushi gummies before. Okay. So the next one here we have, um, and a, by the way, that was from the Netherlands. That's not something I expect from the Netherlands. Um, this is something I, I expect from maybe like Japan or China or something like that. So that's interesting. Hmm. Um, okay, so the next one here is the Nutella Ferrero Be Ready sticks here. So we're all familiar with the Nutella, like the dip. So these are their sticks. So let's try. They're like a wafer stick. Ooh, they're individually wrapped too, it looks like. Ooh, dude, these are quite big. Okay, so I'll take a bite of one just to kind of see. These are from Poland. And if you're kind of looking for a variety, this is a really good box for that. If you're just like, don't want to commit to like one place, just kind of like that's how Universal Yums does their boxes. I'm more preferable to that, but um, if you're looking to just taste different things, this is a good box for that. So here we go. Ooh, wow, it's very, ooh, that's very gooey. good but it's very it is very rich wow it's quite rich mm. it's almost a little too sweet for me but it's good so that is tasty okay moving on um oh we have some like some like dips like a like a kid snack like you know remember like when we were kids like we had these like little like dipper snacks I don't even know if they're still around anymore but we had like the little pretzels and dip them in cheese peanut butter, that kind of thing. This is serendipity. Grab it and dip it stick. Peanut butter sticks with raspberry jam. Oh, so I guess these are peanut butter flavored. And this is the jam. 
product of Greece. Okay, so there we go. That is exciting. I'm excited to try that. What a fun snack. It'll make me feel like I'm a kid again. Yeah, okay. So yeah, that is from Greece. It's like a fun on the go snack. All right, so the next one we have here, and this is the Ramune. I just found out recently I've been pronouncing it wrong for so many years. I thought it was Ramun, but it's Ramune, which makes sense because I did take Japanese for a short period of time. And yeah, that's how it would be enunciated. Um, and yeah, so I got super lemon. I guess this is supposed to be sour. I've tried Ramune before. I mean, it's okay. It's not like my favorite thing in the world. But um, this should be interesting to try since it's sour. And I do like sour things. Um, so by the way, this is the middle grade box that was 25, I believe. So you could get lemon tart and tropical kiwi or the sourest blue cider soda. Um, I feel like I prefer one of the other ones, but that's fine. Uh, it should be interesting, so I will try that later on. I'm usually not a big, big soda person, but again, when I subscribed to this box, I was hoping for that grape juice. I think it was by like Minute Maid, I think, something like that, but like uh, it was a Japanese soda. Um, and so I'm a little bummed by that, but it is what it is. All right, so the next one we have here are these Sour Smog Balls. I don't know why that didn't sound right, but <laughs> I don't know. That's where we're at. Um, okay, these are from Pakistan. Toxic Waste Sour Smog Balls. These candy balls are one are, are one bit of toxic waste that you want to eat. It smells, oof, it smells very sour, like sour powder. Like if you've ever smelled like the sour, like any sort of sour powdered candy, it smells so much like that. Every bag includes the sour and delicious flavors of blue raspberry, lime, cherry, strawberry, lemon, and grape. Ooh, that's quite a bit. I don't, what, what a name though, toxic waste. Hmm. Okay. So they're not chewy, they're kind of hard. So be careful. That's what they look like. crunchy but they're almost like a jawbreaker it's really kind of hard mm. Mm. that's pretty sour Ooh. wow mm. Sour. Once you get past the hardness, I would just kind of suck on it, you know, to kind of get past that because it's a little bit hard. Don't like try and sink your teeth into it. Mm. Pretty good. Mm, okay, so oh, that one wasn't too hard. Mm. That's good. Okay, that's what we have here. Are these chicky crispy cookies? Wow, that's really sour. Mm. Okay, this is from Costa Rica. Costa Rica, yeah, okay. They are try these great vanilla cookies sandwiched, sandwiching rich chocolate cream and enjoy a hearty crunch with every bite. Mm. Okay, so they're just like, yeah. It looks like they're just kind of like chocolate cream cookies. Pretty, pretty straightforward. So that's fun. Okay. So the next one here looks like kind of another one of those Japanese corn snacks that I've gotten so many times. Okay, that's what it looks like. So this one, um, yeah, from Japan. Premium Umaibo mozzarella and Camembert, 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 that's how it's pronounced. 
The savory and crunchy corn stick is packed with delicious cheesy flavors like mozzarella and camembert. That's a perfect anytime treat. So that looks good. I'm excited to try that. Um, these are actually kind of a fun snack. Um, so I like trying these out. So yeah. Okay, that was it for my um, my munch pack. This was the uh, middle grade with the $5 drink add-on. So overall, you know, I'm feeling pretty decent about most of these snacks. Um, I'm not, I get a lot of like chewy candy. I'm not really huge on those, but again, I will try it. And then maybe I'll give away some to some friends. Um, okay, so that was good. Okay. So those, that's our munch pack. I will link below so you guys can check it out. Get a little discount. I believe it's like a $5 discount. All right, so the next thing we have here is our Universal Yums middle grade box. The um, Yum Yum box, I believe it's called. Yeah, the Yum Yum box. Okay, so the Yum Yum box here. Uh, this month is from Egypt which is super awesome. I'm gonna have to vote here because I never vote on these in time and it's almost the end of the month, so I better do that pretty quickly. Um, but this is from Egypt. I also ordered a larger box of this. Right now, let me tell you, I feel like their customer service is extraordinarily slow, like so slow. Like someone responded to me, like I, I emailed them a week ago to make sure that I'm getting the Egypt box, not the Thailand box that I already got. See if several days went by, emailed them again. Someone responded saying that, oh, I can't find an account tied to your email address, which is kind of weird because in the string of email threads at the bottom, um, I was replying to an email that my order was on the way. So it was kind of weird that they couldn't look up my account. And so I'm like, okay, here's my email address. And it's been another couple days. And it's like, it's been a week. So, yeah, it's kind of a little bit of a pain, um, and they don't really have any like live support, so you can't really get a hold of anybody. Um, and it's the same thing when I ordered some products from their shop. I messaged them right away after placing the order, uh, and was like, "Hey, would I be able to add on an item? Because I, you know, decided I want something else. Later, can I add something else to the order?" And apparently, like it had already shipped before they got the email, which is weird. So they have people working, but I don't know. It seems like they don't really have people like checking their emails or anything like that, but they have people like logistics people getting the stuff out. I don't know. It's kind of weird, but okay. So they have something about some snacks that didn't make it into the box. Uh, these poor snacks didn't quite make it into the box. Have you tried them? They, they are some dark chocolate cookies and cream wafers. That would have been awesome to try. Um, Kono corn, super sweet chili corn scones. That would have been good. Crazy with strawberries and cream. I would have, I would have tried them. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to definitely vote on this because they always seem like the good stuff always seems to not make it. And I don't know why, like if it's just that it was a taste thing. I don't know. Um, but okay. Um, so the first thing we have here are these Kono crazy tomato puffs. They look like Cheez-Its. And I was watching the video, uh, I think it was Beardly Honest, shout out to those guys. They pointed out that these these characters kind of look like they're from the Sausage Party movie. And I'm like, oh my, I had to laugh out loud. I just, it was funny because it's, it's kind of true. <laughs> they kind of do. It's just, yeah, it was funny. Um, but okay, so we're not, so this is, by the way, a $25 box. Um, okay, so let's try the tomato puffs. So, unlike dates, tomatoes were only introduced to the Middle East 200 years ago, so fairly recent. And yet today, Egypt is the fifth largest tomato producer in the world. Uh, the answer takes us to a city called the Tenth of Ramadan, where a cutting-edge greenhouse technologies turn 2,500 acres of desert into a fertile farmland. Wow. So I guess they have a ton of fresh tomatoes right now. Mm. Oh, they smell good. They smell like tomato. Mm. They look like Cheetos. Smell like tomato. What does it look like? 
Mm. Those are good. Mmm. I gotta be careful with those. Mmm. Mmm. I want another one. Alright. <laughs> mmm. They're good. I love tomato flavored things. It's not quite the same as those Canadian chips, but it's like it comes pretty close. Okay, so the next one we have here. Oh, by the way, this is the box. I don't know if I showed you guys the inside of the box, but. It's the box right there. There we go. Okay. So the next one we have here is this Tiger Chili and Lemon Potato Chips. You've tried sour candies, sour lemon candies, sweet lemon desserts, and tangy lemonade, but today you'll be trying spicy lemons. Egyptians are no stranger to the far out flavor. Pickled lemons preserved in jars with salt and chilies date all the way back to the 12th century. Today, Egyptians add them to their favorite dishes for an unmatched umami flavor, or they'll eat the preserved slices on their own, rind and all. Okay, so they look like ordinary potato chips inside there. And one of the reasons I ordered the larger box is they had like full-size ver versions of these chips that I had to try. So that's looks like kind of just looks like a Ruffles Ridge chip. Like something I've tasted something like this before. I feel like mm, I think there is a chip out there that has like this flavor because it tastes really familiar. Yeah, well, it's definitely not the first time I've tried something quite like that. Okay, so all right, the next one we have here are these Kono uh, mind-blowing pizza cones. They had another one that didn't quite make it into the box, which is kind of a bummer. Mm. Kono pizza cone. Pizza. Pizza cones. Where are they? I don't even see them in here. Pizza cones. Here they are. Okay. Pizza corn snack. So it's like bugles. It looks like bugles, kind of. There we go. Same idea. You probably associate pizza with Italy, but we got two tidbits that will make you think of Egypt. The ancient Egyptians were cooking topping garnished flatbreads all the way back to the 12th century BC, 3,000 years before tomato based pizza was made in uh, Nepal's. I think it's Nepal's. The centuries of practice might explain the second fact. As of 2020, all pizza makers in Italy are actually Egyptian. Ooh, I didn't know that. Is your mind blown? Not yet. Time to give these addictively pizza cones a try and see if they live up to their name. They look like they're um, quite garnished in spice. Mmm. Wow. That actually does taste like pizza. It tastes like a pepperoni pizza, like a round table pizza. No, actually not pepperoni, maybe combination. Yeah, that is, that is interesting. Mmm. Mmm. That's pretty good. All right, so I think I'm going to try all these just so I can do a little questionnaire. Um, Next one we have here is the Kono. We always get a lot of the same brands in these types of boxes. The Kono Popcorn Burning Barbecue. Okay. Mmm. Mmm. Yeah, it is kind of spicy. Look at that. Mm, that's good. Okay. Mmm. Yeah, it's kind of tasty. Okay. All right. So the next one we got here are these. It looks like butter and herbs pretzel. Pretzel. The uh, 
BC, uh, Egyptian medicine scroll dating all the way back to 1550 BC contains some of the world's oldest herbal remedies. For example, coriander was used for ingestion. Cumin was prescribed for body aches and pains. But if it's a growing, growling stomach you're suffering from, you'll probably need a much more modern remedy. I think these buttery herb dusted pretzels are just what the doctor ordered. Okay. That's what that looks like. Ah. I guess they're lightly dusted. Not like there's not like a ton of on, on stuff on here. Mm. Mm. Yeah, so it's not like heavily mm, flavored, but it's pretty good. So that's what those look like. Okay, so next thing in here we have is this El Shamadon um, white chocolate wafer. Ooh, that sounds kind of good. Not something you see all the time, a white chocolate wafer. So that's cocoa cream inside. That one's okay. Mm. Mm. Okay, so that's pretty good. Uh, the city of Alexandria has had more fair share of marvels. There was uh, Pharos, a three, 330 foot tall lighthouse that for centuries was the tallest man-made structure in the world. Nowadays, the city is home to much more modern and mouth-watering marvel, the El Shamanon factory where this luscious white chocolate wafer was created. Mm. It's pretty good. Yeah, I like that. Okay, so what's next? All right, so we have these uh, quality cinnamon butter cookies. I was watching another video, they said it was very cinnamony, and I'm seeing here now it says the cinnamon cookie. So it's, not, it's a little bit different than what we'd kind of expect from like those you know, those tin cookies that we're all used to. In 320 BC, the Greeks and Romans thought cinnamon was sourced from the nests of giant vultures who collected it from far off lands unknown to mankind. In actuality, it came from the bark of trees in Ceylon, modern day Ceylon, Ceylon that's like the tea, Ceylon. But savvy Egyptian traders kept their source totally hush hush. Okay. Interesting. Okay, let's go ahead and try them. This is kind of what they look like here. Okay, let's try them. Okay. Just look very, very simple. They kind of taste like a ginger snap cookie. I don't really get too much butter. So, okay. The next one we have here is it looks like an apple straw. I don't know if they meant to send me two attached to each other, but they did. Gummy green apple strips. The ancient Egyptians may have invented eye makeup toothpaste bowling. Ooh, they invented bowling and the first prosthetic limb. It was a toe, but there was one thing that could, they could have never dreamt of, a stringy green apple gummy. It's not because green apples were first grown in Australia. These addictively juicy gummies are made by Egypt Foods Group, a local company that opened its doors in 2000. Ooh, okay, so let's try a bite. Okay, this looks like sour straws. It looks, okay, it looks like they're pull apart. Like the pull apart string candies here too. Even says they're um, made in Egypt, Egypt foods. That's pretty good. 
be nice if it was a little, a little more sour, but it's still pretty good. Mm. Okay. That's that. Alright, we got a couple more things. Hmm. It doesn't look like there was a yum bag with candies. That's kind of unusual. Mm -hmm. Okay. So the next thing we have here are these Duetto dates. Soft biscuits filled with date paste. They kind of look like Fig Newtons in like a bar. This Miss Uncle. And they, yeah, they do. They look, it looks like one giant or two. Like big new fig newtons, not big well fig fig newtons. I've never been super into fig newtons, but let's see how this tastes. It's not bad. Mm -hmm. Actually, not bad. Pretty decent. Okay. So this is, there's no, okay, so I guess, okay, if you're looking for dates, there is no better place than Egypt's Nile River Valley. For millennia, this especially fertile region has produced more dates than anywhere else in the world. Uh, thousands of years ago, dates were pressed into wine. Today, they're used to make delectably crumbly cookies. Mm, okay. So the next one we have here is this. Sacolens wafers filled with halva and coffee cream. So that's what that looks like. That's a lot of wafers in here. Yeah, there's at least three wafers here. Okay. So this next... Okay. So, I'm going to go ahead and try this wafer and coffee cream candy. So this is based off of, um, mm, tastes just like coffee beans. Mm. How simply, you, you know, Harley sat down in an Egyptian home before he offered a cup. Take your pick of a bitter brew with mildly sweet, medium sweet, or very sweet, or very sweet. Mm. Guests supply the chocolate and hosts supply the coffee in Egyptian homes. Very interesting. Okay. Mm, pretty good. Mm. I don't really get sesame. Um, but I get the coffee cream for sure. I can taste the coffee cream and it's really good. Okay, so the next one I have here is this Euro Coconut Bar. Okay. Uh, you can taste the pharaoh perfume. It's head to the Valley of the Kings. Only the wealthy could afford to import coconuts from India, making them an elite status symbol. Okay. Let's open them up and try this. Oh, it's just like a... Just a coconut bar here. Okay. Hmm. It's not like that, um... There's a candy I'm thinking of where they have the little coconut in it, like very popular candy here. This is like, like it has a similar taste, but it doesn't have that gritty like coconut shaving taste. This is actually like kind of like marshmallow. This is very chewy. It has like a marshmallow texture. That's actually pretty good because I'm not, I like coconut, but I don't really like the shavings. Like the texture is just not for me, but that's pretty good. All right, so the last one here, Looks like a hazelnut wafer. I feel like I've seen so many variants of these before. Um, so, okay. Yeah, the chocolate wave hazelnut. If you're visiting a friend's home in Egypt, you'll never arrive empty-handed. Hospitality is a huge component of Egyptian culture. So it goes without saying, guests bring gifts. Okay. Most Egyptians don't drink alcohol in accordance with Islam. And flowers are reserved for somber occasions, which leaves one gift no one can ever turn down. Chocolate. I'm down for that. Okay. Alright, so, yes, it has hazelnut cream. Let's see. Kind of these fun facts are pretty fun, especially if you go and visit the country. It's kind of nice to know, like, their customs. You know, to, you, know, you don't want to, like, offend. Um, it looks like this is kind of like a little bit of a mess here. Hmm. 
This kind of tastes like that Nutella thing that I tried in my munch pack. This is pretty good, but I mean, it's pretty typical. I feel like so many of these wafers have like that hazelnut flavor to them. Um, okay, but it's pretty good. All right, so that is it for my Egypt box. Um, I am going to do an unboxing of the super yum version, which will have larger sizes and more things to try. Uh, but I'm not going to give the little history lesson that I kind of gave with each of these. Um, unless it's like a new item I'm just trying out. But these books have their fun, they're in informational, it's kind of nice. Unlike the Munch Pack, they don't really include anything. They just, you know, they include here, they include the, like, the snacks and stuff like that. But they don't give, like, a lot of intricate de detail. Um, just like there's a couple of fun facts, like, here and there. But that's about it. Um, so I feel, I appreciate that Universal Yums is a little bit more interactive. I just wish their customer service was a little bit better. Um, but yeah, so I enjoyed this box. I'm looking forward to getting my uh, larger box. So I'll have more goodies to share with you guys. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoy this video. I will see you guys in my next video. Oh, please don't forget to give me a thumbs up, hit that bell to get notified. Please subscribe. If you like, like my content, please share. I would super appreciate it. And I will see you guys next time. Bye. Hi, Miss Yonko. What are you up to? Hi. What you doing? You laying on top of the laundry? Huh? You aren't you? I know. You get this. Okay.